Hi everyone, welcome to your first virtual lesson. Um, today we're going to do a walkthrough for your next Excel pause and practice exercise. Um, and we're going to try to do it as, as much as possible the way that you are used to doing it. Um, since we've already been through a few of these, you should know the procedures uh, a little bit. But what I'm going to be doing is sharing my screen with you through this video and walking you through uh, Pause and Practice 2-1 in the Excel chapter in case you need help uh, completing it on your own. So if you have your book ready, um, what we're going to be focusing on today is Pause and Practice 2-1 from the Excel chapter, which is on page 536. So make sure you go, follow along with me, and feel free to pause this as necessary so that you can keep up uh, and follow the steps along with me. Okay, here we go. Okay, so in step one on page 536, it says to open Paradise Lakes 02 uh, from the student data files. So we need to go to Blackboard. Go into our class and on the left go to content, open up the Excel folder and Paradise Lakes 2 for Pause and Practice 2-1 is right here. So I'll click on that link and open it. Okay, now that you're here, click on Enable Editing. And just like we always do, the very first thing we're going to do is save it. So if you're working from home and you don't have OneDrive synced, just save it to your desktop computer or your laptop, wherever you use your flash drive, uh, someplace where you'll be able to find it. If you do have OneDrive synced on your home computer, you can go ahead and save it there. Just make sure you save a backup copy just in case, like we usually do at school. Um, I'm going to save it to OneDrive first. And follow along. It's your initials, space PP, space E2-1. Okay, so for the objective for this lesson, we're going to be working with formulas. We're only going to talk about basic formulas for this class. Um, and I'm going to try to make it clear on the screen what I'm typing and what I'm doing. So follow along with your book and also follow along with me as I'm doing this. I'm on step three now. It says click cell B10 on the Cast Lake sheet. So we're in the Cast Lake sheet down here. B10 is here type equal to start a formula. Anytime you use a formula in Excel, you have to start it with an equal sign so that Excel knows that what's coming next is a formula. Uh, so equal first, then B5, which you'll see it highlights B5 in blue to show you what it's going to start to do. Um, then plus, no spaces, and then B7. So type that in up here in the formula bar, equal B5 plus B7, and it's showing you that it's going to add this cell and this cell together, uh, then press enter, and you get a value that shows up, um, and that's it for that one. Uh, select cell B10 and point to the fill handle. So go back to B10, the fill handle tool is a little square down in the corner, remember. And we're going to drag it across all the way over to H10. You're going to get different values showing up if you did it correctly because, again, Excel is very intuitive and it knows what you want it to do. In the first set, we said B5 plus B7. 
In the second set, it changes it to C5 and C7. In the third set, it's now D5 and D7, and so on. So it knows what to do and how to change it for you. For the next part, we're going to create a 3D formula and use absolute cell references. A 3D formula in Excel is a formula that refers to another sheet within the same uh, file. So we're in the Cast Lake sheet. To use a 3D formula, we are going to refer to one of these other tabs that are down here at the bottom. Um, absolute cell references are when you fix a value. So for example, we just put in B5 plus B7. Um, or our rental revenues that we just did. And then the following cell, when we use the fill handle tool, it changed it to C5 plus C7. What if we wanted it to stay as B5 and B7? We can fix the values and make them absolute references so that Excel does not automatically change them for us. That's what those are. So in step four, select cell B15. Type equal to start the formula, then click on cell B11, or you can just type it in. Then type the asterisk for multiplication, and click on the Rates and Tables Sheet tab. So that's down here at the bottom, it's the black tab. Click on that, and then you have a whole lot of values that you can use here. Uh, we're going to select G2 from this sheet, which is the 8% rate. Click on that, and you'll see it comes up, up in your formula sheet. Uh, that's the 3D formula that we just put in. Next, it says to press F4 to make the reference absolute. When they say F4, they're talking about F4 on your keyboard. If, if you type it in correctly, when you press it once, it puts dollar signs in your formula bar. Putting dollar signs or typing them in to a formula fixes the value. So this will stay G and this will stay 2 as long as I leave it that way. No matter what I do, it will never turn to H and this will never turn to a different number. If you're not sure what I mean by your F4 key, let's go here. On most computers, your F4 key is right here. So you're going to press the actual button F4 on your keyboard. Don't do F and then 4. Press the F4. It's the function key. On laptops, sometimes your F4 key is uh, on, another, on another key. So you have to press your function key, then hold that down, and then press F4 in order for that to work. Uh, so, press enter, and it should take you back to the original sheet, the, the Cast Lake sheet. And now we have a value underneath B15 that says 58712. If you did it right, that's what it should look like. Next, put yourself back into B15, use the fill handle tool, and drag it across to G15, all the way over to September. Okay, on to step five. We're going to create and copy a 3D formula with mixed references now. So in other words, some of them are going to be fixed and some of them will be allowed to change when we use the fill handle tool. So select cell B16, type equal to start the formula. Um, then it's going to be B11, which again you can just type or you can click on. Then we're going to press F4, just like we did a minute ago, twice. F4 one time puts two dollar signs up in your formula bar. Press it again, and now the dollar sign is only in front of the 11. It's between the B and the 11. That means that the B can change, but the 11 will stay fixed. Okay, next. Type the asterisk for multiplication, then click the Rates and Tables Sheet tab one more time. That's the black one down here. 
This time we're going to select cell G3, which is the 15% rate next to management. Now, before you do anything else, you're going to press F4 three times. That's going to change where the dollar sign goes, and again, it's going to change what is able to change and what is going to stay fixed. So one time puts dollar signs between uh, or in front of the G and the three. Pressing it twice puts it between. Pressing it three times now puts it in front. That means that the G will stay fixed, but the three can change. Okay. If you had any trouble with that, take a look at my formula tab up at the top, and you can just type it in the way that I have it up here. Uh, when you're ready, press Enter. Let's see what happens. So now we have a value of $1,100.85 showing up in B16. If you did it right, that's what it should look like. Next, we're going to select cell B16, and we're going to use the Fill Handle tool to drop down to 17. So we'll drop it down first. Then with these two selected, we'll pull it over all the way to September. Okay, so, so for step six, uh, we're going to use the formula auditing tools. This isn't going to affect your worksheet in any way. I'm not going to be able to see what you're doing for this step, uh, but I am going to show you what this does. So you can actually just watch this part right now if you like and just skip it all together. Um, but it says here to click cell D D17 to take a look at what the formula did. So this is what it looks like. Um, this all stayed fixed. The G stayed fixed, but now it says a 4 instead of what we originally typed it in was a 3. Okay, it, then it says to click the Trace Precedence button, which is in the Formula tab. So in the Formula tab, Trace Precedence is over here. What this is going to show you is where this all, where Excel is pulling all of this information from to display these values. So it pulled from this cell and another worksheet to come up with this value. Um, if you click on E16, as it says, and I press the Trace Precedence button, E16 is calculating by taking the value from this cell and a separate worksheet, and that's where that is coming from. This little icon means it's a separate worksheet, which you already know we use the Rates and Tables tab down here to figure that out. Okay, so now if we click Remove Arrows up at the top right here, this is going to take everything that we've put all over the screen back off. Um, now it says click the Show Formulas button. That's right here. And what that's going to do is anywhere where we used a formula, it's going to display the formula itself and not the value that it's calculating. This is another way you can audit formulas. So if you find a mistake somewhere, um, you can easily change it. You don't have to go through each cell individually and check and see why something isn't displaying properly. You can click on Show Formulas and everything is there at a bird's eye view. When you click it again, it hides it and it puts it back to the normal view. So click it one more time, turn it off, and we're back to normal view. Okay, so on to step seven. We're going to edit the formula and correct an error. It says to select cells H15 through H18. So H15 is here through H18 down here. Make sure you use the select tool to do that. And then click the auto sum button. Auto sum is located in a couple of different spots. Um, if you are in the formulas tab still, like we just were, because we were doing the trace precedence. There's an auto sum button right here. You can just click on that. And all of the sums will be displayed and it's automatically calculating the sum across for each row. Uh, next it says to widen column H. So since this cell right here isn't displaying the proper number, it doesn't mean it didn't work, it just means that it's not big enough to display it. 
it wants you to widen the column. So to widen a column, you go up to the top in between the H and the I. Um, go in between the H and the I and just drag it over a little bit, just enough that it now displays properly. Okay, for this next step, we are going to create a deliberate error so you can see what Excel does when it finds an error. So we're going to click on H16. And it says, edit the cell range to B15 through G16. So right now it says B16 through G16. We're going to change that and mess it up on purpose to B15 through G16 now. Yeah. And then we're going to press enter. Okay, so what you'll see now in the cell is a little green arrow in the top left corner here. That indicates an error. And then when you click in the cell, you'll also see a little warning sign here. That's the trace error button. If you click this little button here, it gives you information about what it thinks is going wrong here. It says it's an inconsistent formula, meaning it's not consistent with everything else that we've typed so far. Um, what we can do to fix it right from this menu here is just select copy formula from above. That'll fix it, make it consistent with everything else, and now it's correct again. If we were to turn the trace precedence on, we will see that it's now running correctly as everything else it was also. So we're going to skip that step right now and go to step eight. Now we're going to set the mathematical order of operations. So if you're familiar with the order of operations from math class, then you know that, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, which is parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division, and addition and subtraction are always uh, applicable. They apply to Excel as well. Excel knows the order of operations and will perform them for you just like a calculator would. So if you need it to do something in a certain order that is not consistent with the order of operations, you have to indicate it using parentheses. So that's what we're going to do next. So select cell B21 and then we're going to type the formula in using equal first, then parentheses, then B11, minus B19, close the parentheses, then we get to use a backslash for division, and then B11, and press enter. This is the formula for revenue minus, minus expenses divided by revenue, which is called profit margin. If you did it correctly, you should get something coming up as 0 0.24. The problem with that is that this is profit margin is not a, a money amount. Profit margin is actually usually uh, displayed as a percent. So we're going to change that next. So click back in B21 and click the percent style button, which is back in the home tab. Under the number group here, percent style has its own button. Just click on that. And now it's displaying as 24%. We're going to copy the formula all the way over. So grab your fill handle tool and drag it all the way over to G21. And that's done. Okay, now we're going to name a cell range. Um, the reason you would do that is if, we, if you had to refer to a group of cells consistently, um, you can give them a name as a group. And then anytime you click on that, the whole group in, in, as an entire uh, selection will be chosen. Um, so you'll see what I mean here in a second. Select cell H11. Uh, H11 is over here click the name box. The name box is up here in this top left corner. I'm going to click on that and instead of H11 we're going to call it total revenue. Type in total revenue with those spaces and then press enter. 
So total revenue is the total of everything in this entire chart. Next, select cells B11 through G11. B11 all the way over to G. Make sure you use the selection tool to do it. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to click the define name button and define this since this is a group of cells. So we're going to go to the formulas tab. Define name it has its own button right here. Click on that. And then we're going to type in monthly rev. So monthly underscore rev for monthly revenue. And then click OK. If you click off of this now and go back to A1 and you click the name box arrow, you can see that the things that we've just defined are showing up. If you needed to get to these pieces of information quickly, now all you have to do is go to your monthly revenue and all those cells are highlighted, total revenue, go right to your total revenue. Okay, so we're almost done here with this part here. So now we're going to go format cells uh, B16 through H18 as comma style. So select B16 through H18. H18 with comma style. Back to the home tab. Comma style is in the number group right here. Click on that. Decrease the decimal two times. One, two. Then select B15 through H15. And decrease the decimal two times for that as well. And that one's done. So that's the end of Pause and Practice 2-1. It is the only one that we're going to do in this class involving formulas. So hopefully you learned a little bit about how to enter formulas, um, how to check for errors, and so forth. Uh, we're going to go ahead and save it right now. Make sure you save your work. I'm going to back it up so I'm on campus. And now you can go ahead and upload this to the Dropbox on Blackboard. So over in Blackboard, you're going to go to Content, Microsoft Excel folder, open up the Excel Submissions folder, and here's the spot to upload Pause and Practice E 2-1. Browse, find your file. And hit submit and you should be good to go. If you've had any questions about this, please reach out to me. Um, let me know what I can help you with.